亲爱的女士们、先生们，大家好！在中国农历新年到来之际，我在 Linda 的网站，全世界屋顶绿化最权威的网站，向大家拜年，用中国传统的方式向大家恭贺新春。祝你们在新的一年里身体健康，事业有成，万事如意，恭喜发财！大家都知道，中国的三十年来，工业化、城市化得到了迅猛的发展，同时污染也越来越严重。最近出现在北京、天津等大城市的雾霾天气，造成了严重的空气污染。使得中国政府和老百姓高度关注。多种一棵树，少开一天车，成为社会的共识。最近刚刚开过的党的十八大，提出了大力推进生态文明、建设美丽中国，这成为中国的国策。我深信，我们的屋顶绿化、立体绿化事业。从此进入了快车道，这是一个千载难逢的机会。在这里，我诚挚地邀请世界各国屋顶绿化的专家们、我们的企业家们，到中国来，和我们中国的同行一起来建设美丽的村镇、美丽的城市、美丽的中国，共同来呵护我们人类唯一。生存的地球，呃，我们是中国唯一的屋顶绿化协会。我们在中国已经成功举办了三届世界屋顶绿化大会：二零一零年上海世博世界屋顶绿化大会，参会有八百人；二零一一年在海南岛举行了世界屋顶绿化大会，参会呢。有四百人。二零一二年，在中国的杭州举办了世界屋顶绿化大会，参会人数达到一千五百人。二零一三年，今年的世界屋顶绿化大会将在中国的南京举办。南京是中国的六朝古都，是中国园林最秀美、经济最发达的城市。刚刚落成的南京子东创意园区，共占地一千亩，所有的屋顶百分之百实施了屋顶绿化，有屋顶菜园，有空中花园，有屋顶草坪，有墙体垂直花园，还有地下车库顶部的绿化，共约十五万平方米。这里是目前中国。最生态、最低碳、最宜居的新社区，在这里，我欢迎世界各国的朋友们，今年的十月，光临中国，欢聚在南京，共享我们的世界屋顶绿化大会，为世界生态环境做出更大的贡献。谢谢大家，欢迎大家的到来。Hello, everyone. My name is William. I'm working in China World Roof Association about more than three years. I'm so glad to attend the Warsaw Summit. Welcome to Nanjing World Roof Congress 2013. I represent all companies and employees. We 圣阳生态林的贵宾，沉重承诺，建立长期的友好合作关系。
，这你们由来东方文化园是住特殊假日酒店室，享受我们最认真的贵宾服务。世界屋顶绿化大会生态林揭牌仪式现在开始。
园区建成一个生态的。经过他们调研以后，他们决定要百分之百无绿化，而且呢，多种形式，有屋顶菜园啊，屋顶果园，屋顶草坪，空中花园，而且呢，突然介绍最优秀的队伍给他们，给他们的心态啊，很开放。刚才这个姚总也讲了，欢迎各位有什么绝招、有绝技的都来。他们今天一看到这个布兰特先生的演讲啊，学习最强。下午呢，杨明伟先生演讲，他马上跟他们接触，要请他们在园区里头做他们的房子。我觉得他们思想很敏锐。我们前年新城的老总啊，也是这样，他也找他们两位。做标志性的建筑，我觉得我们除了来开个会，如果再有事儿，建筑是永久的，这简直太好了啊！太好。第二个，我们就讲新的项目，一定要争取多做公共花园，因为在设计的时候可以把河来搞好啊，台湾的林汉子，好，太好了，墨西哥，墨西哥啊，这个很有意思，印度人做的。叫这个天升天呢，就是一个墓地啊，啊，你们要升天堂吗？我给你搞一个升天堂的地方，里面全是树，披上树干，我这个理念非常好。这个刚才戴主席已经讲了啊，非常好，非常好。古典花园的关键性技术啊，很多啊，今天在这里呢就没有时间讲啊，快到时段时间。第三个，已有建筑要做屋顶草坪，解决量子大面广的问题啊。我们赵老师这个呃，国家草啊，在全国已经做了八百多万平米啊，两地啊。光这个现在临沂啊，我是上个月底去的，就做了二百多万啊，二百多万。这个今年我们周长就讲到泸州啊。所以我觉得这个轻型的绿化很有前景，是应该大量做的。那这个为什么要讲一下呢？屋顶草坪每平方米的重量只有八公斤，那你想想，什么样的房子能做？除非是马上要塌了，你别做了啊。那这种我觉得很值得提倡。森林柏林呢，还有玉器啊，它基本都是这个技啊，欧洲的、北美的技术。它这个很好啊，它的这个结构图啊，啊，这是它的结构。另外一个，我们提倡把屋顶草坪跟这个檐口的绿化、女儿墙啊结合起来，这样呢，使得景观更漂亮啊。第四个，我们提倡墙体绿化，已经成为世界啊立体绿化一个新的亮点。它除了具备啊，屋顶绿化一切的好处之外，它对孩子的视力，还有体现这个执政者的业绩，都非常突出啊。这，啊，这布兰克先生刚才大家都见到了，这是我在海南请他的时候啊。那现在呢，他已经成为我们这个协会啊，垂直花园的首席科学家啊。那个杨老师呢，成为我们的首席生产线的大家，所以大家将来啊，我希望呢，多在我们中国留下一些他们的作品，来带动我们国内的啊，屋顶绿化、生态建筑、墙体绿化。这是新加坡的啊，今天晚上要给他们颁大奖啊，颁大奖。这是我们在新加坡啊，啊，垂直绿墙，今天晚上要给他们颁奖。我们都去参观过多次了。第五个呢，我们提倡要做柔性的颠簸啊。啊，这是金字塔在展览的，大家可以交流一下啊。第六一个就是节水灌溉，也是一家来展览的，深圳大图的啊。他们的产品呢，可以节约百分之八十五的水啊，非常好。提倡第七个，就公园做立体绿化的表率和带动，因为公园是个公共的环境啊。刚才大家看了新加坡的公园的造访，跟这次前江新城公园的
人潮，地下很多人潮，地面人潮，空中也有人潮，形成一个很立体的地方。啊，台湾的，啊，未来的，啊，许多人。第八个我们提倡的木材的花园、菜园、室内的绿地化。今天晚上呢，我们有一个讲话，给我们一个老的专家啊，李教授啊，他家里面做的这个啊，呃，这个竹树啊，是他自己发明成的。最可贵的是，国家环保部的专家去测，志愿者去测，他达到了。联合国世界卫生组织的标准，但是室外呢就严重超标，是七十九，他家里面呢只有十四，啊，第九一个讲工业农业是解决人与土地的矛盾，既有生态效益，又有啊经济价值。我们昨天去参观的千岛湖啊，它整个形成一个生态链，下面。有一个啊，这个蒸汽池，把三百五十个员工的排泄物，一个小养猪场的充分，还有呢厨余垃圾，都变成这个蒸汽池里面。蒸汽呢拿来啊烧水做饭啊，那个蒸渣呢用来做有机肥，还有一个雨水收集啊，这样呢形成了一个很好的生态链啊，这是。第十一个就讲要从道路来抓紧，道路啊是 P M 2 5的重灾区，所以一个办法呢，今天也来参的，正在看到要做沥青的透水地面，透水旁边再加上雨水的收集，啊，这来疏啊。在马路的上头还有过街天桥，都搞上喷雾的喷水系统。但是呢，它可以把 P I R 呢消灭在摇篮当中。啊，两边是多种树啊，我是对比晶体的，在多种系的冬天也不落叶子。把有条件的北京的玻璃幕墙啊改成水幕墙，尤其是二环路和三环，啊，多搞一些湿地。提倡低碳啊，节约。我们这个索尔来参加，还有水稻先生的啊，这个把呃隔离啊，跟这个绿化美化结合起来，都是非常好的产品。
很大的改善，很大的改善。我的建议是这六条啊，六条啊。谢谢各位啊，因为影响大家了。最后再说一下，我们今天的宴会呢是六点三十开始。前面我们有二十个啊，桌子是留给获奖者做的，爱情奖啊，都给你们留了座位啊。我也希望大家一边吃饭呢，看看我们这个爱情奖啊。谢谢各位啊，请大家去参观去就餐。
a lot of people coming and following. So it's fantastic to see. And uh, my speech focused only on very few aspects. I would say um, to be on the right time, it's a hard point. So I find the first point I want to say, and bring an example from the internet, everybody can see this, that uh, our ideas for example for the green walls, the uh, vegetation structures, is not a new idea. There was a pattern in 1937 in the uh, American uh, patent uh, um, world, and uh, there was an idea to build it, and uh, a lot of details. And now we have to put it all uh, over the world, at least. But this is the standard device that at that time he was too early. Unfortunately, we have no examples from his first idea to see how it works. But, uh, uh, now other persons follow this, also at the university now in the US, and they try to uh, see uh, how sustained these kind of principles are, but there are many ways to, to, success, uh, to succeed in this field. And uh, I'm coming from Germany, you, some of you know that we have a guideline and a lot of things and uh, traditions since the 80s, how about we move to build a facade and so on. But also our it's just now the time to speak again about uh, these technologies because it's a new level. Huh? It's a new level means we can learn from other countries. Uh, it's very strong development in China, strong development in the US and so on. And we can learn now that uh, we can help each other in the different countries together. And uh, this is now sketch here. Um, the
if you find the aircraft over the roof of the room, you come this nice place here, and you see in the night, okay, in the desert area, you can see 10,000 meters to the ground because there's no evaporation cooling on this. If you have a uh, wetland somewhere, you have a cloud and rain and so on, and we can uh, have these process back in the city. This is the evaporation and a lot of uh, aspects in sound. We can have the water management by the tension of this, okay, too much uh, to absorb in detail, but we have the technology for the last years and uh, uh, decades to see what is the ecosystem function of the view in our plant or region to know how much it operates in winter time, how much it operates in summer time. A lot of scientists ask many, many questions how we move. Thank you. 
Kaffee Cola. And this is a, 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 a agricultural production for these plants as well. And thinking about the uh, rural area, you know, for the city, the city is very important. But looking for all the farmlands in that, what do you think? Farmers in China, do they like such a building on the, uh, to produce something? This could be a nice farmhouse area at least, or it could be a small farmhouse village like this, or somewhere in Germany. They have steam fruits, they have a nice agricultural production, and they have a uh, very uh, high quality living style there. This is also possible with the greenery, and I think this is the next level to go also to the agriculture farm. Uh, yeah, this is my top message. It's a big message from big cities, right? And going to the agriculture and uh, more to do and more to be, uh, speak in detail in small talks. And thank you very much for your attention at this place. Thank you.
can retain rainwater, grow crops, provide shelter, and even provide equal electricity. But I say it looks like something out of the 60s. It looks like a, a, a horror movie. How about night in the living roof? Or maybe attacking the killer mushrooms? And so now that's the real thing. We start with our number 10 category, client specific boutique green roofs. This is a category we've had every year, and it's kind of a catch all for projects that are just too unique to fit into their own category. Start with the Violin Arch on uh, Taiwan, a proposed project that aims to rid the air of the smog using a variety of living walls uh, to convert uh, harmful gases into oxygen. It's 23 floors, zero carbon emissions. It has solar and wind power, bioreactor for water purification, recycling and eliminating waste. And of course, every part of the suspended sky gardens inside and out. This is the Department of Homeland Security, the United States, Washington, D.C., and the uh, U.S. Coast Guard headquarters. It's a current project going on since 2016 with four phases. It has been ended up with 18 roofs, nine courtyards, and two parking garages, all covered with about 400,000 square feet of living roofs. Here's some graphics showing what they should look like. This is a planted roof from November of last year. Here's some of the roofs uh, in May of this year. And here's another overview. This is the Mexico City, Cucabeta de Espina, which means the green way, green. Um, it's a um, art installation, basically. They put up so far five large vertical wall structures, um, basically hoping to transform public spaces. And they place them at intersections so that the cars as well as people who need to cross the street can learn about the benefits of living walls and the plants. Now, in reality, some have not fared as well as they would have liked, uh, but they, the public is learning about what can happen when we try. So I'd like to at least congratulate them for uh, trying with this wonderful work. This is the Port Show U.S. headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, it's an office training and driving function that's set into one sleek, high-performance facility. They originally scheduled it to have 72,000 square foot of green roof. It's a really cool building. You can actually test drive and Port Show through the campus by driving inside and around. But we found out last week from HOK that at least for now, the green room has been reduced to 7,000 square feet, a little value engineering going on there to reduce the cost, but they certainly hope that they can increase this in the future. This is the National Music City Center in Nashville, Tennessee. It was recently completed just a couple of months ago. It's got three independent wavy green room sections. It's working to achieve lead silver, that's with the U.S. Rebuilding Council. You can see another pretty shot. This is Noah's Ark. It's a conceptual project that, that aims to be a sustainable city to support refugees from all living species, from humans and animals to fish and plants and even trees. You can see they, they have areas for food production as well as areas just to lounge around and enjoy nature. Number nine, Green Museum, Art Living Inside and Out. This is from a design competition in Taiwan to propose Spiral Garden Museum. And so what they want to do is they're taking this corkscrew form, using the ramps where people can travel up and not only see living art uh, within the walkways with vegetation, but also art, art sculptures. It's another way to enjoy the landscape scenery of your park. And organizing the inter internal exhibition space and the structure of the museum, providing both internal and external access to the programs. Beautiful night, well, Scott. The Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust in uh, California. It's a legal structure that is partially buried underground or sheltered, and the designers wanted to embed the, the museum into their surrounding park landscape. It has interactive media and interface design, includes iPod Touch, handheld devices, and large format screen table. Touch screen table. Here you can see a sustainability diagram. So although the client wanted an above-ground iconic museum building, the architect wanted to maintain the open space by submerging the building into the ground. Blast furnace number three in Monterrey, Mexico. Here they've taken a decommissioned blast furnace brownfield site and turned it into a museum showing the history of, of, of the um, factory. So the actual design calls the 
been committed from the glass furnace itself. It's the largest tree group in Latin America right now. The Schäfer Museum Extension in Frankfurt, Germany. You can see how this bulging green group hides the underground art gallery. And these skylights provide a lot of light inside. And it looks very cool from the outside. Number eight, educational facilities as green living laboratories. This is the Group School Vertical Garden by Country Plot in San Francisco, California. It is a new assembly of performing arts space and classroom building uh, into one covered by this beautiful 700, the 1750 square foot living wall hall that also has a 2600 square foot green roof on top. It's very cool. The kids get to learn all about botany and different forms of vegetables and plants and herbs. And it's made goal for new construction and for school pilots. This is Duke University, the Nicholas School of the Environment in North Carolina. It's a current project that's going on where they needed an additional classroom, so they decided to put it on the roof as solar hot water, photovoltaics, spray water, and rainwater recycling. The Greater South has 100% edible planting, and it has a photovoltaic trellis for shade. This is the University of California at San Francisco's stem cell building. Um, it's the Rain Denmark Dolby Regeneration Medicine Building. Basically, they wanted to have the three groups of, over the classrooms and also the laboratories. And so that they've also incorporated tons of recreation space into the building. There you can see a nice little head shot. This is the Milstein Hall at Cornell University in upstate New York. This is Cornell College of Architecture, Art, and Planning. They decided they needed a flexible student studio space. And then below, they needed lots of natural sunlight, so they incorporated 41 skylights on the green roof, which is really cool because the cattle labor is about 50 feet over to establish a relationship with the site. And you can see here how beautiful it looks in the autumn with the see them starting colors along with them. And at night, they light up the skylights, so it's become an art installation of its own. Number seven, upward spirals of green. This is the Marine Garage in Singapore. It's a very large reservoir dam and it serves several purposes. It boosts the water supply, alleviates flooding, and provides tons of recreation space. You'll see people up there flying kites, performing Tai Chi, just sitting around picking up with the kids on this massive bridge, which also has a large photovoltaic installation. And of course, you can enjoy a huge panoramic view of the beautiful downtown city skyline. The Express Lane West Kowloon Terminus in Hong Kong for a project through 2015. It will provide new high-speed rail station underground connection to the River Pearl Delta and the mainland. And it's got these wild arching pins spiraling on top. It will offer abundant natural daylighting. It's covered in pedestrian paths and these really cool spiraling green roofs. They call it the Gateway to Hong Kong and it will have an outdoor performance amphitheater vegetated sculpture garden and will also have a large green wall inside. And to top it off, we'll have an observation on the deck. The Shanghai Tower current project should be ready in a couple of years. Rethinking the vertical city, when it is done, will become the second tallest tower in the world. What's really cool is the, the double skin facade that it has, it, it, it spirals up into the air, 125 feet tall, and have wind turbines, sky lobbies, and seven major vertical parks and water harvesting, and it will also help 35,000 people, targeting high need and three star ratings of the Chinese building certification. Number six, hospital healing through living architecture. This is Mary Catherine Bunting Center at Mercy in Baltimore, Maryland. They have rooftop meditation gardens on several levels, the eighth, ninth, and tenth floors, about just under 20,000 square feet. Of course, we all know how patients do much better when you see greenery and you can relate to biophilia to make, make you feel better. So you can see from the plan view, it's a beautiful respite. They use recycled furnishing materials, native plantings, and a water feature. And you can see how it looks from the floor, very nice. The Sheikh Khalifa Medical City in Abu Dhabi, the hospital administrators wanted the patients to feel more like guests in their, in their facility, so they incorporated hanging gardens, graders at courtyard levels, shops, dining in this facility.
ability to make them feel more at home. Uh, equivalent to the goal, the Medical Center is aiming for a two pearl rating under the Estadama Guidelines for Sustainable Design. Clinica USP Sagrado Corazon, the Sacred Heart Hospital in Seville, Spain. They claim to be the first vertical garden in a hospital in Europe. I cannot substantiate that claim, so I'm not really sure, but it's beautiful. You can look from the inside lobby out onto the, the courtyard here, and then you can also walk through. It's up very nice to go and touch the plants. 14,000 plants with about 40 species. And they base the design on the works of early Marx's um, suspended garden in Sao Paulo. Basically, they took the plant view and put it up in a vertical way. This is the Labyrinth Vegetative Reef Garden at the Orlando Health MD Anderson Cancer Center in Orlando, Florida. Um, in, in, um, in healing, the labyrinth or the maze is used as a tool to instruct patients about finding their way through crisis with spiritual growth. So the therapist will come out and bring the patients <coughs> excuse me, for meditation and contemplation. This is the Sharp Memorial Hospital in San Diego. This uh, nice green group is located over the emergency room, and um, it's a non-accessible green group, so they needed it to read very well from plan view, from overhead shots. And what the patients see when they go down is a musical score made of plants. In fact, uh, it, it shows the first few notes of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, Ode to Joy. And of course, the patients really love looking out the window and looking at plants instead of the tar roof. This is the Kutek Quat Hospital in Singapore. It's a lovely um, hospital. They're creating garden views for patients and staff is their motto. They have eight roof gardens, five levels, a quarter planters, 81 balcony planter boxes. It's a healing environment and it's also a stadium garden. And the really cool thing is, <coughs> excuse me, they get the staff to, to help out and participate, which they know is very good for them as well. And it has landscape footprints in every floor.
Detroit, a lot of different types of crops. Privately owned and operated, and they are open to the public. Their planting beds range from seven and a half to twelve inches. Their second project is larger, five thousand square feet, and they have an educational nonprofit arm called City Growers, which hosts lots of um, New York City's youth, and so they take them on educational tours and workshops and how to use the, the fruits that we're farming. And they also have a lay, egg laying hens and a commercial apiary, which is about 30 feet high. This is an example of a vertical farm, food factory, uh, Jerry's Irwin, Green Living Technology, partnered with Steve Ritz, uh, Bronx, and the New York educator and, and teacher, <coughs> where they started teaching these disadvantaged Bronx kids how they could actually earn a living in the classroom using uh, installing green roofs and green walls. So they started out with this mobile edible wall unit, turned it into a commercial A-frame, and then decided that they could actually scale this at different uh, scales and, and create a, a large food factory. So you can see the different scales here. On the, on the right, the planting of the green walls, and on the left, you can see they're already harvesting their, um, their products. Their prototype is small, it's about 400 square feet, on an old food link warehouse. 100% organic and zero waste water. They also have uh, a few beehives up on top. Here you can see the conceptual and the reality and see how it's actually uh, come out in the future. This is Bar Room. It's a company out of Hawaii. Their first farm is on a restaurant in Oahu. It's about 600 square feet with about 20 different kinds of lettuces and herbs. Starting off small, you can see it's kind of cool. They're, they're long tubes that you can roll up. You can set them out and set them in a bed of mulch. You can poke holes and plant your vegetables. Now, as you know, Hawaii imports about 90% of its food, and there's a lot of poverty, and this is one way to get people having healthy food and something that's not that expensive. On Common Ground is a green restaurant in Chicago. It's award winning. Um, it's pesticide free, roof garden. They grow all types of different crops up there. The restaurant itself produces no waste and uses photovoltaics for hot water and feeds customers with the local organic food. Luca Farms in Montreal, Canada. The first year, the farm produced more than 250 tons of fresh produce using no unnatural herbicides, pesticides, or fungicides. You can see the greenhouse here in the winter. Its first commercial sale on the top of greenhouse farms. What's cool is the produce is harvested as day day and is delivered. Yesterday we went on one of the tours and we went to a rooftop agriculture farm up in the, the Ten Thousand Lakes district. It was the Chinstone um, garment factory. But they have something very similar. It's very cool. And they just got some financing and hoping to expand into Ontario, Canada, and the U.S. This is a prototype project which is actually under construction right now. It's based in Sweden. Uh, it's called the nickname the Plant Scraper, the International Center of Excellence for Urban Agriculture. Basically, um, it, the crops grow around this giant central helix transportation system where they start at the top, they're irrigated, um, nurtured, and harvested at the top, and then they, they, they come down in this helix all the way down to the basin. Biogas runs a greenhouse heating and cooling systems. Number three, Singapore, sitting in the sky garden. We were lucky to be there in 2010, and it's wonderful to have a government support behind you. Um, Singapore has so many lovely projects. I could have highlighted um, Fusionopolis, um, Solaris, Gardens by the Bay, but these are projects that have already shown before, so I wanted to show other representative projects. This is a great Bay Sand integrated resort, the world's most expensive casino hotel. It's amazing. You're there, and it's almost scary. It's 650 feet high, 55 floors, and it and you can't leave 65 meters over the edge. I'm showing these photos. And of course, the entire top is a great room. Gardens, an incredible pool that you'll see. You can see the sections from the different levels. How about this view? Amazing. And from below. And it's got a really neat uh, 50 meter infinity edge swimming pool 
but again, it also has interior and exterior green walls and a beautiful line shop. Universal Studios in Singapore uh, is 124 acres and it's Asia's first movie theme park with so
located over structure, over a parking garage, and a train station. So it's uh, almost you know, 1.1 million square feet. Um, it's very iconic. It has the Lurie Garden. It's just beautiful. It's just it's a massive place to go. It has the, the Bean. It's a beautiful attraction in Chicago. This is a smaller project. It's very important. It's the Gary Comer Youth Center. It um, provides an outdoor classroom for, that, that, that you can learn about math, horticulture, culinary, and business. It, it's located in, in the south side of Chicago, which is very poor. And the, the kids don't have any place at ground level to go and play in the dirt. It's unsafe. So they decided to um, put the green roof you know, on so that they can go in there, get their hands dirty, and learn about vegetation. It produces 1,000 pounds of fruits and vegetables annually. And the roof garden feeds about 130 kids a day in the cafeteria. And they've also done testing where they show average temperatures between 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer on the roof in winter and about 10 degrees Fahrenheit degrees cooler in the summer. And they have these beautiful series of skylights, which makes it very distinctive. It serves about 600 students and community members anywhere from about 8 to 80 years old. This is the Aqua Building in downtown um, Chicago, overlooking the Michigan Lake Michigan. It's an 82-story mixed-use residential skyscraper. Um, it, the Green Roof sits on an eight-story, 140,000 square foot base, and it has walking tracks, hot tubs, gardens, gazebo pools, and a fire pit. The building itself is very striking. It's very wavy. The balconies represent outcrops from the region. Here you can see the Green Roof below. And so it's fun. Some of the balconies are very teeny, and some of the balconies are quite uh, spacious. And it overlooks Millennium Park, and you can see Lake Michigan there. The Aqua Building, this is the fire pit area at night. This is, and I'm, I'm ending now with Navy Pier, also known as Pierscape, uh, James Porterfield Operations. We're, we're brought on to design a 3,000 foot landmark. It's, it's uh, Chicago's in the Midwest, most famous tourist attraction. So they're, they're bringing activity back again to the waterfront bringing, uh, and updating it. Their idea is to have terraces, promenades, and edges. So you can see here they, their centennial mission is to make People's Pier a truly iconic and world-class destination as it approaches its 100th anniversary coming up in 2016. They're going to rename different areas of the park as well. Pier Park will become the fun room. And um, they propose to create a sensory based lakeside experience that will reactivate engagement and enjoyment of the water. It's a beautiful area and uh, bring people back to Lake Michigan. So, here you see a couple, a couple of scenes in the summer and in the winter multi use. East End will become a lake room. The Crystal Gardens will become a magic room. With, you see these beautiful hanging botanical spheres designed by Patrice Vaughn with a variety of green walls along the way. And I'm sure they'll be. And we'll get a lot more green walls and vegetation in there. And here we see the, the night shot. So, uh, bringing to the end of my presentation, I invite you back to visit greenness.com to stay on top of the green world. Um, thank you, and please do visit us during our virtual summit, um, January 9th through February 8th, presented with the World Green Infrastructure Network. And that's it. Thank you.
个我们要演讲的主题呢，就是一个关于可持续这个城市的这个各种方面的讨论。我觉得说从三个方面来考虑，一个就是说这个像这一类的城市不只是可持续的，而且更要是能够是繁荣的、富有的，而且也要健康的。很有兴趣的没看到你们这个论坛的这个题目，就是要讲治理第二。但是治理二点五不是单单治理这个空气污染的问题，而是要从很多角度去考虑这个城市是怎样去发展、怎去规划、怎样去管理的。所以我就在接下来三十分钟用新加坡讲一些呃例子。但是我认为说，单靠技术的前进的技术来来达到目的，不是一个唯一不可行的方法。呃，甚至有时候要从最简单的方法。那这新加坡大家都很熟悉，我们面积非常小，呃，我就把这新加坡这个地图这个名字放在你们杭州市里面，看就知道新加坡真的是小到很可怜，呃，只有七百平方公里，但是小，我经常都说小有小小的挑战，有它的问题，但是从最艰难的挑战里面，往往我们可以学习到一些东西。
就很少考虑到什么是一个可持续的环境。呃，从一个从他李光耀的政府的管理的方法来看，不是从单方面就是环境方面来考虑，而是从经济、环境和社会的发展三方面作为我们的三重底线来呃发展的。但是从三个方向要同时进行，有时是有它困难处，所以在从环境方面呢，是下了相当大的一个功夫。因为我们要如果要创造一个更繁荣的这个经济条件呢，更经济的这个投资的环境呢，需要一个好的环境，要人民生活呃满意，生活和平也是要一个满意的环境，就是这个可持续环境值得首先。呃，功效的一个一个条件。那我先谈一下我们新加坡可持续环境的几个方面。呃，这个，比方说后面这个你看到这个背景呢，就是我们新加坡七百平方公里岛最中间的一个呃绿带保护区，这就是可以说是在本岛或者在呃热带一个保留的非常好的一个呃热带森林。所以整个岛就是这么大，有七百平方公里。我们的平均人口密度呢，差不多达到每平方公里七千三百六十三个人。一个国家、一个城市来说，新加坡可以去网上查，可以算是不是排第一，可能排第二的。人口密度算是非常高，所剩下的土地空间不多。但是我们的绿化率相当高，从新加坡园林局的这个数目表示呢，我们的绿盖率呢达到将近五十八线，这就是不只是单单园林，而包括街边的种树和草木等等，各式各类的绿化，把整个岛覆盖的差不多有接近五十八线，这是一个非常好的成绩，也就是为什么大家到了新加坡觉得感觉不到人口密度。而感觉到周围都是呃绿化，当然这个是让我们觉得非常骄傲的。刚刚结束的，刚刚建好的一个项目，如果现在大家到新加坡去，都呃一定要去参观这个我们的滨海公园。这个滨海公园是政府在最宝贵的黄金地里面拨出一个呃三十多公顷的一个土地，作为一个新加坡的中央公园。就等于取代了像呃我们过去一直有的这个植物园呢，这个变成一个第二个更加大、更加漂亮的这个滨海公园。滨海公园中间也包括了两个浴室，就是呃里面种植了这个温带的这个树木花草，让我们能够更加去学习。这两个筑建筑也是绿色建筑，它就是把全国这个树木花草这个呃。砍下来的呢，作为一个新的这个燃料，来呃提供这个呃创制造这个冷气空调的这个环境。那我所说的不是这个项目，而是要指出说，新加坡另外一个很成功方面就是我们绿色建筑的总蓝图。在这个七百多平方公里的小岛里面呢，我们有超过将近一千三百个绿色建筑，也就是以我们新加坡这个绿色评估呃政府的。呃，叫做 green 呃 green mark system 来评估出来的，在这个七百平方公里小岛里面有一千三百个绿色建筑，数目你说是多吗还是不多？那我就给你比较一下，比方说在美国用 B 来 certify 的这个建筑里面，在华盛顿城市里面，华盛顿主要市区内呢，大概是一百六十多平方公里，有差不多接近七百九十九栋。绿色建筑，那就表示说每平方公里有接近四栋绿色建筑，呃，新加坡数目大概是接近两栋呃绿色建筑，这个数目呢，将来还会再增加，因为新加坡在二零三零年达到所有既有建筑、现有建筑百分之八十全部要绿化。啊，再给你一下其他的数目，纽约市本身大概有七百九十多栋呃绿的建筑物。纽约市当然包括周围环境，差不多一千多平方公里。当然，这数目比起新加坡密度方面就小了。芝加哥有七百三十多，芝加哥面积跟新加坡差不多。所以你看得到，新加坡在这方面是下了很多苦功，因为我们知道没有绿色的建筑呢，这个环境是不可持续的。
所以这个绿色建筑的标准，当然在过去是一路注重的节能，呃，节节能量，但是在现在走下一步呢，就是呃，这个建筑建设局非常注重建筑呃目的和立面的绿化，也给加多分数，这是一个很好的方向。那、啊、这个新加坡绿色城市的演变，可以说是从一九六零年到将来呢，已经走了两步。第一步就是大家所熟悉的叫做花园城市，也就是上到一九六零年到一九九零年代，呃，我们都有这个这个呃 logo 的 garden city 来形容我们的城市。那、呃、接下来呢，过去十年呢，我们已经改变成叫做花园中的城市。今天早上也听到杭州市也采用这样的一个说法。那再下去呢，我们会走什么样的路呢？我本身提出的意见，我也替政府提出这个意见，就是说，我看将来走向可能就是我们成为第一个风中的花园城市。第一代的花园城市，等于就是最基本的花园城市。花园可以说是发展中城市的定最点。他们的建筑不只是共处，也把环境变得更优美。这个成功的例子在新加坡已经看到了。接下来我们所要看到、希望看到的，而且在努力进行中的，就是我们所谓的花园中的城市。我给你看这后面的图片，并不是画出来的，是真正的新加坡的一个新政，叫做碧山新政。碧山新镇和另外新镇中间是一个整个绿带的一个很大的这个公园。这个公园不只是呃，比方说刚才我给你看的滨海公园是很大的，这个比它小，但是以新加坡的这个投资来建设公共图来说，是一个很大的投资。啊，这个绿带等于就是把整个新镇呃，就是夹在它的中间，叫像纽约的这个中央公园一样。从这个公园里面望出去，某些角度，你就可以感觉到，我们等于就是已经达到这个花园中的城市这个效果。这个花园就改变成城市的背景、舞台、建筑，就好像舞蹈园，把城市的完全包围，让城市处处感受到花园的存在。再接下去呢，新加坡大概已经到了，我们这个人口不断的在增长，从。一九呃六零年代呢，呃一百多万的人，现在已经提升到五百多万，甚至有可能到六百多万。那这么多的人口，将来是要往哪里去放呢？当然，建筑会建得越来越高。目前我们最高的公共呃这个民房或者是呃主屋，已经达到四十多五十层楼。在这么高的主屋里面呢，我们要怎样去达到自然和建筑的这个？所以，我很非常高兴的，就是说，在过去五年，我们已经看到一个新的方向。同样的，大家到这个新加坡去游玩的时候，一定要去看这个金沙，就是这我们出非常出名的赌场。赌场三栋大楼，五十多层楼高，在最顶端就是一个空中花园，不只是一个空中花园，还是一个空中游泳池，可以从一端一个大楼游到另外一个大楼。不必走路。那这第三代的花园，就是由地面跳跃到空中，把城市的活动空间和园林带到更高的境界。那这同样的时候，当这个建筑在建成的时候，我们刚才我提到，就是新加坡也建完这个最高的政府主屋，它同样的也把这个高楼顶层接起来，作为一个空中花园，甚至在中间层也加上一个空中花园。这两个例子就给我们带来很大的启示。我也经常跟政府呃提示说，在前部长呃在位的时候，我还跟他提说，新加坡城市是可以将来成为一个模范例子，因为我们密度高，气候好，要种什么都可以活。那最好的例子就是我们尽快的把空中花园提倡出来，把整个城市。呃，鼓励每个建筑都建空中花园。现在这个目前这个已经效果已经开始渐渐达到了，但是还是每个建筑都建自己的空中
外流，而不是连接起来的。所以，当这个金沙把它连接起来的时候，我觉得这个是非常非常好的一个想法。如果再大胆一点，不只是从这三个建筑里面把它连接起来，甚至把整个 CBD 连接起来的时候，它的效果是会怎么样的呢？我相信这将会把新加坡变成一个又一个非常不一样的城市，也就是所谓的这个空中花园。因为我相信，在将来的新加坡，以我们的密度来说，以人口增加的这个速度，我们地面的花园将会达到饱和。如果没有再增加更多的空间，更多漂亮的绿色花园在建筑的之间，我相信我们这个环境是不平衡的。所以我唯一的最好、最佳机会就是把它分中，呃，这个花园所以。所以，我是有这严谨。现在你们去新加坡，当然是看不到这个。我相信，可能在将来十年内，到新加坡去的时候，可能就会看到这样的现象。那其实，作为建筑师的本身，我们经常现在都面对，不只是新加坡，甚至在很多城市，这个建筑密度、容积率都越来越高。比方说，这个是在我们呃新加坡附近一个国家的一个呃规划设计，它这个容积率将达到将近九点零，在一个很长很长的这个土地空间里面，同样的，唯一的方法呢，就是把这个空间做出来，作为第二个甚至第三个活动空间。这样的一个活动空间，不只是单单。呃，从设计方面带来很大的这个结构的挑战，在技术方面也有很大的挑战。就刚才戴主任说的一样，呃，要怎样去确保我们这个垂直或者是立体空中花园能够很好的维持下去，而不只是说在建好的时候或者是在画图的时候显得非常漂亮，而是在人用的时候，在五年、十年之后呢，还确保它是会变得越来越漂亮，更加漂亮、更加好的环境。而另外一方面，我们要考虑的只是不只是技术上的问题，而是管理方面的问题。就是说，在这么高的空中花园里面，从防火那个角度去看，要怎样的去应付，而且还要看到社会这个小组集团方面怎样去维持邻里的这个呃共存。很快的，我当然讲的是很多是关于我们绿化跟这个硬件方面的这个一些挑战的一些解决方法。同时后，我觉得很重要、很平衡的，就是要知道我们新加坡不只是注重在呃环境的可持续，甚至还非常注重社会的这个健康状况。这个后面的图就是刚才我们你们看，就是这个我们这个最新刚刚完成的这建政府组。也就是五十层楼高的建筑，它把在二十多层跟五十层楼高的这个屋顶连接起来，作为空中花园。嗯，好好。这一个项目呢，目前也可以说是新加坡达到最价格最高的政府组，已经超过了这个呃呃一个 million 新加坡钱，就是呃一千万吧。嗯。那我给你大家一些数字，也了解一下我们新加坡这个社会的。呃，繁荣发展的那方面。这个一幕有一点问题，呃，是没有变的吗？
经济方面，我们也是可以说是相当成就。在最近这个 n i g h Frank 和这个 City f i v e Well 集团的这个报告公布里面，估计新加坡国内生产总值在二零一零年的每人均是大概每年五万六千多元，按照买力平均衡量是世界最高的水平之一，其他包括挪威和美国。那新加坡可以说是呃一个越来越富有的城市。当然，最重要的呢，最近呢，政府也访问了一些呃老百姓，说他们将来所希望看到的新加坡是怎样的。很有趣的，很六十多个人的访问都提出一个共同点，就是说他们希望新加坡成为一个最开心的城市。那就是表示说，不只是希望说这个环境优美。不是单单是个成功的城市，而且希望说这个城市是能够呃达到某一种平衡，尤其是在工作和生活上的平衡。所以，作为一个绿色城市的挑战是非常多的，不只是单单单靠单方面来考虑。呃，我在这边也趁机，既然在杭州，我就趁机提一下我一些呃简单的意见，因为我非常喜欢杭州。我记得在一九八零年。的时候，一九八二八二八三年，第一次来杭州就爱上了杭州，呃，一直都没有敢回来过杭州。到了九零年来过一次，很短的时间。呃，我觉得中国很多城市里面发展的太过快，就是觉得说已经失去它原本的样貌，失去它原本漂亮的地方。但是唯一令我觉得感到很骄傲的就是，西湖的周围的发展还是保持的非常好。直到我觉得这个是，的确是中国国内可以说是最漂亮的一个城市。但是我也知道你们面临面临的挑战非常的大，将来的发展还是会继续的增加，压力会越来越大。是否能够保留这个城市的美丽的市容呢？那我就比较一下杭州跟其他几个城市的这个呃呃比较。作为一个这样类似的绿色城市。那其他正在一个雅致带气候的这个城市呢，呃，可以有几个呢？尤其是在湖边建起来的城市，呃，例如就几个，呃，这个雷科莫，呃，就是意大利的那个城市，但是这个密度非常非常小，根本不能够跟杭州比。另外一个就是日内瓦，雷吉内瓦，也是一个可以说是人口比杭州小的城市。唯有一个比较接近一点的，就是芝加哥，呃，密苏根，呃，当然这个城市所面对的湖是非常非常大，跟西湖是不能比的。而且我本身认为还是西湖比较漂亮。所以作为作为杭州一个这样的城市，它是有非常好的条件，但是要将来怎样的去进行这个规划和发展呢，才能够保留它这个领先的地位呢？我愿意提呃，希望提出一些看法，就是认为说，能不能够考虑说，在这个杭州西湖做一个绿色建筑的缓冲带？我知道已经有很多规划在控制说杭州西湖周围的发展，但是从绿色建筑的角度来看，可能还没有达到的成熟点。我所提议的就是说，这周围在大约一公里到一点五公里的这个周围呢，提议说，所有的建筑都要达到绿色建筑标准。比方说，你们这个三星级的这个建筑的标准，要环保、节能和绿化。但是我也提倡说，这个做法呢，一定要实惠、实际，不能够是预设清晰。呃，当然的，非常重要的，这所有的建筑都要用立体和屋顶绿化。所以，我们新加坡提供一个例子，就是这个 Zero Energy Building， 或者是零能源建筑。它也是政府率先带领，呃，示范怎样去创造出一个低能，呃呃节省智慧的这个呃又廉价的这个呃建筑，所用的这个手法都非常简单。刚才也听过一些专家提，我就不多提，有时间上的问题。那另外一个看法，这个可能是挑战性比较大，因为我都知道中国跟其他亚洲人一样喜欢。买车用车，是否我们可以考虑说创造出一个中国园林式的这个街道和人行道，改变以汽车交通为主的这个规划方程式，以降低车辆
为主要考虑点，把所有的主要道路改为中国园林式的街道和人行道，创造出杭州独特的里约大道。这个我相信挑战性是非常非常之大，因为甚至来以我来说，我有车在新加坡，要我不驾车是很难的事情，这是实话实说。但是，如果我们要跟其他的世界上最美的城市比较的话，我们这方面可能要下很大的功夫。比方说，我这个非常喜爱的一个大街，就是这个巴塞罗那的这个拉布拉，它这个大街实际上是有车的，不是单单人人行道。在你看的图片里面，中间是最宽的部分是人行道，但是在两旁边是车道。这个意思是说，把人放在街道的中间。从意义上面来讲，也非常是有意思的，就是说以人为主。所以在将来我们做规划的时候，我觉得应该放弃我们传统式的规划模型。传统式就是说，在还没有这城市规划出来的时候，先画街道，画出一个六条街道的大路，把车挤满它。那将来做这个城市，是不是有意思呢？其实我们就是把城市更加污染化。那只要去要这个。治理 PM 二点五呢，这简直就是不成道理。所以要这样的去控制这污染的话，第一点，我觉得就是从规划方面要重新、重新的去考虑，应该以园林式的街道和人行道为主，大胆的把这个街道重新的规划和设计。我觉得在杭州这个西湖一公里的这个圈子内，应该可以做得到。当然，第三点就是增加人口园林面积。大量的增加城市绿化量，我把它划分成三个部位，就是 A、B 和 C， 以它的不同地理环境、目前规划的考虑点来进行。A 的部分就是在现在这个山呃园林的部分呢，鼓励所有在里面的建筑要达到一百八千的绿化，包括园林设计也要达到这标准。在 B 的部分，最靠近西湖北面和东面。要达到七百五十八线的绿化，包括屋顶的垂直绿化，啊，其他方面是五十八线绿化，最重要是屋顶绿化。所以从这个新加坡的例子呢，我们要大胆的去做，就是大量的绿化屋顶，大量的绿化垂直地面，而在园林设计方面重新考虑怎样去创造出中国式的园林设计，把整个城市充满这个园林的气氛。如果能把这三样全部做完，再加上这个呃，生城市的这个经济发展的繁荣，而人民生活环境的健康，环境达到可持续，我相信在二零二零年，也就是超乎超过十年之内，杭州将会是一个非常不一样的城市。尤其说从这个 Google 的，从这个呃卫星拍下来照片呢。杭杭州西湖边可能就是一片的绿色，也都看不到建筑了。那从这个核心点蔓延出去，将来的杭州城市不只是这一公里西湖一公里内是最绿色、最健康的，甚至达到周围整个杭州市都变成是最典型、最中国式、最园林式的绿色城市。好，我就讲到这里。